Hey, Brian Krause, and I am sitting in my office today, and I was just asked, well, about a week ago from my mom and my wife for like the 10th time, what is a list of things I want for Christmas? As I thought about it, I really only came up with one great idea. I want a flipper zero. That thing's a really cool device that can hack different wireless technologies. But something that I do every single year, or I have for the, the past, I don't know, decade or something like that, is I come up with a list of books that I would like to read. And I shouldn't even say I come up with a list of books I want to read. I usually try to make a goal that I'm going to read 24 books for the year. I almost always fail at that one. But this year, I ended up reading nine books. And for my Christmas list, I want to put some new books on my list. And that's what I'm asking for some help for. I wanted to tell you about a few of the books that I've read or the nine books I read. And I wanted to ask for some advice of, do you know of any great business books or security books you think I should put on my book list coming into 2023. So looking at some of the books I read, the first, I rented this one from the library, so I don't have a physical copy of the book, but it was 27 Essential Principles of Story. What I thought was kind of interesting on this book is they, they really talked about how do you write a great story, and the key point there is you got to figure out what is your central dynamic question, what are you trying to answer, and then as you lead someone through a story, don't just say and then now. You got to string it together a little bit better and really think of ways to challenge your character. And as you lead them across their journey, look at something happened, therefore we got to the next step. That was kind of the key takeaway there. The second book I read was The Boys Who Challenged Hitler, Nod Pedersen and the Churchill Club. This was a, a book my son, who's eighth grade now, was seventh grade at the time, really, really loved. And I thought this was kind of cool. It was a bunch of teenage boys that were in Denmark during World War II. And from their efforts of going around messing with the Nazis, they were able to change the entire course of the war in Denmark and really get a lot of the adults to step in. And I think the, the moral I got out of that story is often a lot of us feel like we're powerless to make change, to make influence. And the reality is, you know what, if these little kids can do it, us big adults should certainly be able to do it and maybe we need to step up. Book number three. This book is Software, The Silent Killer of Your Company's Budget. I thought this was kind of an interesting book because it was from the perspective of a procurement agent or somebody that actually buys software. So I'm on the sales side of the house. I help people get the right technology for cybersecurity. But at the end of the day, we're ultimately selling to companies. And at companies, there's procurement teams. And what, what I thought was kind of interesting with that, they have all sorts of trainings that they go through on how can they negotiate good deals for them. And a lot of this book talked about what a procurement agent is going to look for when they negotiate a contract, such as how do uplift fees work, how do multi-year deals work. And it also even talked a little bit about, um, you know, how, how bonus structures work to a degree uh, for somebody in that position. And I just think if you're somebody that sells to companies, especially, you know, large enterprise sorts of business, this is kind of a must read because it, it gives you the mindset of what's going on within our customers. And obviously, if we can understand what's important to our customers, we can deliver better products and better value to them at the end of the day. Book number four, The Power of Habit. And a lot of this, I just think, was kind of a nice mental mindset of, hey, how can you as a person change the habits that you do on a daily basis, right? I mean, lots of us have great habits, hopefully, and unfortunately, lots of us have real bad habits. And how do you change some of those habits? And what it really comes down to is thinking about what is the cue, what is your reward? And if you can kind of change how your cues, response, and rewards work, all of a sudden you can build a habit. And if you pair that habit with something you already do, and maybe you want to do, I don't know, be really good about working out or do 50 push-ups a day. Well, maybe instead of just going straight to lunch, you say, hey, my reward for doing my 50 push-ups is I get to eat lunch. And you start doing that, and after a couple weeks, a month, now you got a new habit. Book number five, The Whole Brain Child. I have three children, so I do care about kids' things, and I, I'm big into scouts, as many of you know who watch me, and as a result, I, I work with a lot of kids. 
And I thought this was kind of an interesting look into how do kids think. And in particular, I think we all get this, kids are very emotional. They don't really think logically. I think you could argue adults don't think logically either. But what it comes down to is you really got to think about feelings when you're dealing with children and what is driving a kid's behavior. When a kid melts down, why are they melting down? If you start looking at what's driving the behavior and really addressing your kids from a feelings perspective, you can all of a sudden have a lot better results. I know myself personally, I've tried experimenting this with my daughter, who I love her to death, but she's somebody that's either going to be the next Mother Teresa or she's going to burn the world down when she's having problems. If I actually sit there, listen to her, explore her feelings, and don't look at myself as to how I'm mad because she's yelling at me, I get positive results out of her and she does good things and maybe she will become a Mother Teresa. Book number six on my list is Ask Your Developer. This was written by the, the CEO of Twilio. Definitely, it's pumping his chest about how Twilio is a, a great company for doing a bunch of API kind of stuff. But what I thought was really cool on this, I'm in the software industry. I sell security software. APIs are definitely the future of the world. Understanding development, I think, is important. And I thought this guy, Jeff, uh, the CEO of Twilio, did a really nice job of just talking about some of the developer mindset what goes into the world of development, how development teams are built. And if you do sell software, I think this is a good read because if we can understand how our software is built and what the challenges are that developers go through, we probably do a better job of selling and more importantly, serving our customers. The Scout Mindset. That's book number seven, has the word scout in it. So, hey, I kind of like that one. But what I really thought was neat about this, this is very much about challenging yourself to look from different perspectives. And the idea is to always be curious. And if we just go with the assumptions or what we believe, we're never really going to make sound decisions. But if we look for the risks in the decisions we're making, we're going to make really good decisions. So you kind of think of it as a scout. A scout is somebody that goes out in a war situation, that is, in front of the forces. They don't have a lot of knowledge. They're trying to piece together what's happening with limited knowledge. So they need to be curious and they can't just rely on their assumptions because if they only go on what they assume, they're often going to die. And that's definitely a bad thing. Book number eight on my list. This is a really cool security book by this woman, Nicole Pearl Roth. It's called, This is How They Tell Me the World Ends. And I really found this fascinating because she really explores probably the last 20 -ish so years of cybersecurity. I've been selling cybersecurity for a little over 20 years. So this is really the entire time of, of my uh, professional career. But she goes over just a lot of the attacks, how some of the attacks have evolved over time, but she writes this as a story. It's Yes, it gets into some technical stuff, but it's not really meant for a technical audience. And she talks about how vulnerabilities are sold on the open market. She talks about weird stories that happen from nation state attacking. Uh, I thought a really cool story was how the U.S. and Israel had attacked Iran and basically, this was to speed up centrifuges in a nuclear facility and just, you know, some stories of, of that nature. There's quite a few of them. Awesome read. I found this thing riveting. It's a super duper thick book. But even being that thick, I mean, I cranked through this thing literally in a weekend because it, it, was, it was awesome. It was like watching a movie or something. And my last book for this year is book number nine. And it's called The Weekly Coaching Conversation. This is really just about managing teams. How should you coach people? And I think my big takeaway here is you need to really focus on your team or those you're trying to lead to come up with the answers and not provide the answers. Because when you get a vested interest from your team, you let them develop what the answer is, you're going to get a better result and you're going to have somebody that's vested. And I know when my leaders do that to me, guess what? They have me on the hook and I definitely work a heck of a lot harder. With that said, 
Hopefully you find some of these books interesting. And if you have a great book you think I should read, please let me know. Hope you have a great day. Have a Merry Christmas coming up and a happy end of your year. Talk to you soon.